I'm Adam Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon in Jackson, Mississippi. I want to show you uh, a new technology from uh, LifeSpine, expandable lateral inner body spacers. And the first case I want to show is a classic patient with L3-4 and L4-5 lumbar spondylosis. And this is a major area of arthritis in the low back where the discs are degenerated, the facet joints are no longer working well, uh, filled with fluid, and the patient has a slip in the lower back between the third and fourth bone, or a spondylolisthesis. Uh, there's also nerve root impingement, which is worse on the right side at L3-4, and worse on the left side at L4-5. So there are modic end plate changes as well, and the patient has suffered from chronic low back pain for many years, uh, refractory to physical therapy, cortisone shots, and uh, chiropractic care. And the patient underwent an oblique lateral lumbar interbody fusion at the L3-4 and L4-5 levels. And using the expandable technology, we were able to restore the height indirectly, uh, decompress the spinal canal and the neural elements and stabilize the spine. Uh, very little blood loss, muscle sparing incision, and the patient was discharged home the same day. We have a CAT scan of the spine afterward and it shows a robust fusion across the space and the spacers are occupying most of the vertebral body width as well. The nice thing about this implant is it provides coronal balance restoration. It also restores sagittal balance, and so that's a key part of uh, maintaining lumbar lordosis afterwards. I want to show you folks a, a really neat case. It's a patient that's been a patient of mine for over 20 years, and what this case illustrates is the progression of spinal implants over the last two decades. It's a 61-year-old woman who had developed adjacent segment disease above a prior fusion. She had had a fusion at L4-5 and L5-S1 back in 2002, and then here in 2021 and into 2022 had developed adjacent segment disease at L2-3. And this MRI scan shows a spondylolisthesis at L2-3 with a large central disc herniation, a facet joint fluid at L2-3, and significant uh, neurogenic claudication with adjacent segment disease. She had uh, bilateral L3 radiculopathies as well. And so I came in uh, using this implant from a lateral approach, oblique, and not having to take out the hardware from before, uh, was able to restore the height, indirectly decompress the nerve roots, and relieve the L3 radiculopathy, as well as the back pain. Uh, it shows uh, in the lower two levels at L4-5 and L5-S1 is the pyramid plate uh, for Medtronic, and then in 2011 used the spine wave with the expandable uh, wafers. And then the latest one is the life spine lateral expandable, which is done minimally invasive, ostensibly almost percutaneously, uh, with no muscle cutting, very little blood loss, and the patient was done in an outpatient setting. The implant is really well designed, easy to place. It's uh, typically in this approach right here is coming in from the left side. It has an integrated plate and an expandable body with seven degrees of lordosis built into it. It's a two-hole plate, and when it lines up and is in place, the holes are offset for the screws and uh, using an awl and then uh, self-tapping, uh, self-drilling screws, it's easy to place these in the vertebral body. They also have variable angles, so if you have to navigate around pre-existing pedicle screws, you could do that easily. And then a simple cam lock prevents any pullout. And it's uh, very safe uh, on the nerves. Again, they're displaced out of the way, uh, working in the anterior middle half of the vertebral body. It's an excellent way to restore height and stabilize the spine. <music>